Good morning. After what was an absolute nightmare of a migraine yesterday, I'm happy to say I'm feeling better today. So we partook in a free breakfast at our accommodation and now we are taking some time to explore some more of Bangkok. Our first stop is at Wat Pho, which is a Buddhist temple and it's most famous for its reclining Buddha. So let's go see. The tickets to enter Wat Pho were 200 baht each, which is eight Canadian dollars each. We haven't even been in the courtyard here for more than five or ten minutes and we've just been greeted by a ton of these beautifully decorated chetis or stupas which apparently contain ashes of the royal family. They're kind of in like a bell shape. They're decorated in ceramics and they have a ton of flowers on them in very jewel-toned covers. The detail is astonishing. In amongst the statues and the little gardens as well, then this is just a very peaceful place, which I guess was the point. But now we are going to head into the main part of the temple. We think. We hope. We just come through to this courtyard and there are four huge stupas. Apparently these measure 42 meters in height and each of them is dedicated to the first four Chakri kings. So Kings Rama the first through to King Rama the fourth. They are each individually and uniquely adorned according to the monarch that they're representing and they are just stunning. Absolutely. It's the same colorful tile work. Each petal each leaf of the flower that adorns these chetis is handcrafted ceramics just absolutely stunning in design color architecture this place is a real treat We've just come out of the Ordnance Hall, which is the main hall at this temple complex. There are also several smaller halls dotted around the complex, and each of them seem to feature a large golden Buddha statue in varying different positions. Like with the Grand Palace yesterday, which had the chapel of the Emerald Buddha in it, the Ordnance Hall not only features the very decorative statue, but it also seems to have a huge mural on each of the walls that depicts a bunch of different scenes featuring this temple, a number of stories from Buddhist law. Honestly, when you look at each of those intricate scenes, then you can be just as lost in that as you can in the statues and the decoration facing right in front of you. It's amazing. It's hard to take it all in because 
of how detailed it all is. It's really beautiful. building that has the reclining Buddha in it and this is the line it goes all the way around in a circle and that's the line to get in the building I did not realize how big the reclining Buddha was going to be. Like, you could not fit it in frame. And I hope that me walking along the entire length of it, which by the way is 46 meters long and it's 15 meters high, helped you understand just how massive this statue is. I think that was the thing. We had a quick look at Wikipedia to try and check out the dimensions of just how big this thing was going to be. And you kind of put a mental picture in your head as to like, oh, that's, that's pretty big. It's nowhere near as big as it actually is. Whatever mental picture you think you've got. And I think it was kind of difficult actually to even get a good shot because you have to kind of go to either end, either like the absolute top of the head or the absolute bottom of the feet in order to be able to get the entire shot in because there's just pillars trying to keep the structure in place along the way which just blocks some part of it so pretty much most of your views are obstructed until you get to like either end of the building so it's um, a bit of a challenge if you are content creators like ourselves or you just really appreciate a good photo or video but still really worth saying. Yeah, and coming to Wat Pho has just been phenomenal in my opinion. I found the entire temple complex absolutely gorgeous and I've just been very at peace here. There's some waterfalls, some gardens. I just think the layout is really serene and tranquil, although we're in a very crowded area here at the moment, but the rest of it it's just a really really gorgeous environment and in my opinion totally worth the eight canadian dollars to get in because you can spend hours here appreciating all the details definitely i think really it strikes me a uh, very similar style to what we saw in the grand palace where there was all of the libraries and the chapels and everything like that and the great thing is it's got all of that beauty but just spread over a wider area. So it always feels like you've got enough space, a bit of room to breathe, and you can just take it in and appreciate it more. That plus it also seems like there's just a bit more dedication to green space, to natural beauty as well, which is beautiful. So this was a really good way to start a morning. Absolutely. Since we are in Bangkok and we are on Khao San Road, we figured that the best way to start this off was to have our first Pad Thai experience in Thailand. So Rachel's ordered a basic Pad Thai, I've ordered a mine with chicken and that comes with a big selection of lime slices so you can drizzle some juice over the top, what looks like some salt, a little spice mix, some spicy peanuts and then of course chopsticks so you can eat the thing. 
super excited for this. Let's dive in. was absolutely delicious and I'm kind of curious to see if there are more food stalls on the street here at Khao San during the evening so I think we're definitely going to come back to compare because at the moment it's relatively quiet. It makes it easy to definitely see all the market stalls and the tourist shops, the bars, restaurants. There's like a ton of cannabis shops here as well and then of course you can go get a $10 Thai massage if you want. And I think we're hoping to get quite a few cheap massages while we're here in Thailand in general. Now we're just gonna head back, chill, and figure out our next steps. just got back to the hostel and my ears are still ringing. I'm curious if I'm actually speaking loud still because I can't hear myself. I can't quite hear you either, so I have no way of telling you that. That was kind of nuts. I think, honestly, 20-something-year-old me would be absolutely all over it like a rash. Because mm -hmm. had you plonked me there and told me it was Iron Apple or Magaluf or Ibiza, I'd be like, sure, yeah, I can, I can get on board with that. That sounds about right. It would be such a good time out. Like the food was to die for delicious mm -hmm. and it was cheap. The drinks were cheap. Yes. The music was pumping so loud that you couldn't hear yourself think and us having a conversation over dinner, impossible. impossible which you can tell we're in our mid thirties because we've just said that, <laughs> but that made me want to party and dance. Yep. I think for any introverts, it would make you want to drink, but any extroverts, it would make you want to dance, but either way you get something out of it. So if we weren't on a strict budget, then we would have definitely got caught up in the vibe. Yeah. We would have had ourselves fun. a night out. Yeah. Cause that did look quite fun.
and it should be pretty fun if that is your kind of thing as well. But I think that's it from us, so we will pick this up tomorrow. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.